Hey everyone, Michael Alm here. So this week I'm working on a project for my brother and my sister-in-law. They are about to have their first baby and I'm going to be an uncle, which I'm super excited about. The only downside is that I'm not going to be able to meet my new nephew for a little while. It is the middle of the coronavirus. They live in Chicago. I live in Seattle. We're on full shutdown. So in the meantime, I can make something for them and uh, show that I'm thinking about them. So I settled on making them a toy boat. This is a Dazzle camouflage ship that I made back in 2014. I made a whole bunch of these because I was obsessed with this era of ship painting. This is uh, a style of camouflage that they used in World War I to confuse enemy periscopes. This is before radar, so they designed them so that you couldn't tell where the bow and the stern were, how far away they were from each other. There were just so many beautiful designs that came out of that era. This era really influenced modernism and a whole bunch of painting. Anyway, I can geek out for a while. I'll post more informa information in the, um, in the text down below. There's access to all the original painting diagrams now. Uh, Rhode Island School of Design has them up on their archive, and these are great ways to, to build the ships and also figure out how to paint them. So I'm excited to do another one of these. These were super fun last time I, I made them. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna make one out of walnut, 12 inches, a little smaller, remove all the pointy bits and make it a nice toy for my new nephew. So stick around and see how it's built. Using one of the diagrams from the RISD website, I was able to scale it to 12 inches and then cut it out. Now that I have that cut to the exact size, I can actually use it on my walnut blank and align it and just draw a line to where I need to cross cut it. I also set up to rip it to width. Now I can trace out the lines of the ship and the bow is a little bit taller than the stern of the ship. So I was able to cut the stern out nice and flat, but I had to stop that cut halfway through just so that I didn't cut the bow. Now I can cut out all the details on the bandsaw. With that cut out, I could start uh, prepping to round the bow and the stern. I found the center line of the blank, and then off of that, I could draw those curves. I only draw them on one side, and then cut each one of those sides out, making sure to save the little bit of scrap that's left over. I use those scrap pieces to trace out the curve on the opposing side and make sure that it's perfectly mirrored. Then I can cut those two sides off, bring the boat over to the sander and refine the shape. This sander has a tilting bed, which is super handy to establish the um, kind of bevel of the sides. Uh, I think this is only a couple degrees, but it makes a lot of difference with the look of the boat. After that, I can set up for the rudder. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting that out using a saw and I just establish a couple of lines and a square edge to stop at and then I use a Japanese pull saw to cut them to depth. And then I can chop out the remainder of the material using a sharp chisel. I can then round out those back edges using a bit of sandpaper. Then it's time to build the bridge. I'm just using one of the off cuts from building the hull of the ship and using the template to make sure that it's all the right size. I cut it to width and then use the template again to establish the length and then I can cross cut it. Using the belt sander, I can round over those corners 
and then I can cut the top of the bridge out of a different piece of scrap wood. Now when you're working with tiny pieces, you gotta be really careful. You can see I'm using two push sticks here and I'm using a pencil with an eraser. Uh, just make sure you're being really, really careful when you're, when you're working with small parts like this. Now those elements are ready for glue up. I like to work with a little spatula when I glue up small parts. I'm also being pretty careful not to get squeeze out. I might get a little bit, but um, I wanna minimize it as much as possible. These elements will be reinforced later, so it doesn't have to be a super strong glue joint. Now I sand the edges flush and then add a bit more glue. Using a square, I can make sure the bridge is in the right spot and then I add a bunch of these tiny little clamps that I have. So while I wait for the boat to dry, I grab a whole bunch of dowels and these are gonna be used for the exhaust ports and the big chimney on the top of the boat. The exhaust ports are made with two elements. This is a 3 8 inch dowel and I drill a quarter inch hole into the side of it. I actually drill, drill a whole bunch of holes into the side of it because I don't quite know how many I want to make or if some of them will split. So it's good to make extras. I can then glue the quarter inch dowels into the 3 8 inch dowel and they need a little bit of persuasion to get them into place. Once they're dry, I can then cut them out on the bandsaw and you can see they're like little exhaust ports. So now I need to drill the holes in the boat. So I'm gonna remove all the clamps from the boat glue up and then find the centers for the two uh, front exhaust ports and I use a scratch awl to establish the centers. I drill those out with the same quarter inch drill bit and I'm drilling the front two pretty deep because it's gonna help glue in that, uh, that bridge. The back one doesn't have to be super deep. Now I'm doing a check fit. I did a little bit of sanding on these off camera just to make sure that they slide in and out easily. And then I can move on to drilling the hole for the chimney. If you saw the pattern plywood stool build that I made a couple months back, uh, you will have seen a larger version of the same jig. It's just a way to drill angled holes on a drill press. And I don't usually keep this jig around, I just kind of make it as I need it. And um, I just grabbed a bunch of shims and shoved them into the back and then clamped the jig to the table and it's, it's ready to go. All right, it is day two on this build and it is time for paint. Really happy with how it's come out and you'll notice that I've left all of these little elements loose so that I can remove them, paint them individually, and for the paint, I'm gonna be using these, which are just the sample paints that you can get from any hardware store or big box store. These are really handy for all sorts of projects and um, they're super cheap. They're like a couple of bucks and you can get all sorts of different colors. So I'm gonna get started on painting, probably do a clear coat after that and then we'll be done. The original boats were painted just by hand without doing any masking, but I thought I would experiment with actually masking the boat this time. Um, this is a little bit of a process on the front end, but it should establish a lot uh, cleaner, crisper lines when I'm all done. A little trick that I've learned is that if you burnish the edge with just something rounded, like a pencil or uh, in this case a paintbrush, you can take a super sharp brand new razor blade and you can cut away that tape and you'll get a really, really nice sharp line. I can then start laying out the pattern using some masking tape. I did two different things. On this side, I just did it um, you know, larger than it needed to be with the, the width tape that I had and came back through with an X-Acto knife and then cut it to fit. On the opposite side, I laid out the tape on my cutting mat and cut it to width there. I think this might've been um, the better method because I got a lot more consistent lines out of it. Thank you. 
So I'm going to seal the edges of the tape. And the reason why is you can see on this one, the bleed out and the this one, which I did seal the edges, you can see it's a nice crisp line. So what I used to do that is um, just some water-based polyurethane and I paint over the edges of the tape. So if anything seeps underneath that, that's gonna be clear. So all the areas underneath the tape are gonna remain walnut, which I think is gonna look really cool. So I, um, I paint over it, make sure that the walnut's nice and sealed, and then I can go over the top of that with a, a water-based primer. I decided to use primer on this because uh, when you use water-based finishes on wood, it raises the grain and this gives me an opportunity to sand it and seal it uh, really early on. So I just painted over all of the exposed walnut with, with this primer. Once it was dried, I could sand it and knock back any raised grain, and then I can start uh, painting with actual paint. I like to go light to dark when I paint, and um, with this, I, I just started by covering everything with the white color to make sure that I had a nice uh, light base, and then that'll bring out the vibrancy in the other colors that are gonna go on top of that. With the gray all filled in, I moved on to this teal color, and uh, this color I definitely struggled with a little bit, mostly because I didn't draw anything on the surface. I was overconfident and thought I could just do this by hand, um, but the more time I spent with it, the more I kept screwing it up, so I started drawing them in with pencil. I actually, this area right here, uh, I kept messing up, and finally I just took some water and wiped the whole thing away, uh, redrew it with pencil, and then repainted it. With all the teal sections filled in, I could then peel off all of the masking. And this is both the most fun part and the scariest part of the project because you're always worried that things are gonna seep underneath the surface. But I think that sealing the tape worked really, really well. I also like to use the X-Acto blade to sort of score the tape um, so that it doesn't accidentally peel up the latex paint. I've found through experience that sometimes the latex paint will peel up like a sticker and that's no good. We're on the home stretch now and I just had to paint those little exhaust ports and the chimney, get those glued into place. And then I added my signature and the design number from the original Dazzle Camouflage ship. I had to scrape this a little bit because I did have some, some bleed out underneath the stencil, but in the end it came out really nice. And then the final step is to cover the ship with a clear coat. I used the same clear coat that I used on the masking tape and I ended up putting about five coats on this just to make sure it was really nice and strong. And I sanded at 320 grit between each coat. When you're doing that over the top of paint, you have to be very careful because you can easily sand through into the paint. So most of that sanding was just done on the surfaces that wore walnut. And with that, the boat's all done. Real quick before you guys go, I've got two announcements and the first one is that my nephew was born. He was born last night at one o'clock in the morning. He's happy, he's healthy, and um, a huge correct congratulations to my brother and my sister-in-law. It's so exciting. This is headed out to you really soon. The second announcement is for you all out there. We are gonna be hosting a big maker event on YouTube Live next weekend. We're calling it the Global Maker Fest. And it's to help, help stave off this social isolation thing and just unite the community of makers together. I'm a big 
believer that making is, is hugely therapeutic and in times like this, I think it'll be really fun to host an event. So I'm gonna be t doing two hours, one hour each day uh, in my shop. So it's, it's uh, April 4th and 5th. And um, let me know what you'd like to see. I'm, I'm open to suggestion. We can do uh, live power carving. We can do pattern plywood work, just a Q&A or a shop tour. Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I hope you guys are staying healthy out there and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.